the great thing is that context switching is itself a skill. It's not something where we are, you know, permanently relegated to having to pay that cost of having to switch. We can actually practice in a way where instead of it taking 25 minutes for us to ramp back into some other task, uh, we can actually only need about one to two minutes to successfully switch contexts. So what does that look like? There are really four pieces that help me context switch effectively, and I've seen this work well for students, colleagues, etc. And so the first thing is to know what your next task is. And so basically, as soon as you knock out whatever it is that you were context switched on, you already know exactly what it is that you're doing next. And again, we'll dive into each one of these four in more detail. And the second thing is to make sure that you're fully focused on that one task that you're doing. Pretend that you're not going to get interrupted, right? Just really focus on it and don't worry about anything else that's going to come up. Because if you're worrying about other stuff, um, then that reduces your ability to actually go focus. And then you want to reflect on how it is that you're using your time. And you want to look for ways in which you can improve on higher context switching. Kind of look for the barriers, the blockers, and um, iterate on them so that, that way you become more and more effective at context switching. First, we really need to know what exactly our next task is. Uh, a lot of time, we're just deciding what should I go do next because there's so many different things that we could potentially be doing. Um, it can take you know five to ten minutes to decide what the next task is. But challengingly, a lot of our work time as product managers is actually quite unpredictable. Um, maybe a meeting ends five minutes early, maybe something gets moved, something gets canceled. And so if we already know what it is that we're doing next, we can actually knock out work uh, very effectively. But if we don't know what we're doing next, and now we have some spare time to go do some work, we're going to be spinning our wheels trying to figure out, oh, well, what is it that we should be doing? And by the time we decide on what to do next, we've run out of time and we have to move into the next meeting or have to move into the next agenda item. And so by knowing what exact task we're going to be doing next, um, that really enables us to just barrel right in and get the work done instead of kind of uh, restart from scratch. Oh, well, I've got these five different things. What's the one thing I should go do? Um, that way you can just focus on getting the thing done. Personally, I use a Kanban board. Um, and it's super helpful for tracking what exactly am I doing next. Um, because you're putting everything out of your head and just getting it down on paper um, so that all of your work is just in one place. Um, and it forces a priority order. Right? The great thing about a Kanban board is that you have to go from top to bottom. You don't get to have ties. Um, and so that way you know exactly what it is that you're doing next. And once you've set the priorities, don't second guess yourself. Um, if it's at the top, you put it at the top for a reason, just go do it. Um, don't spend the time looking at, oh, well, these are my priorities, but are they really the right priorities? Because if you're, if you're sitting there reprioritizing your priorities, you're burning time, you're switching between all these different contexts of here's item one, here's item two, here's item three, how do they stack relative to each other? And that takes a lot of time. And so prioritization, once you've set them, just run with it. Because prioritization uh, can take a lot of time and a lot of context switching um, to actually go set what it is that you're doing next. And so um, this is an example of uh, something that I might be doing today, right? So um, I need to schedule an ad hoc one-on-one, -on -one. Um, I need to um, schedule a quarterly business review, I need to send some um, email, and then below that line, I'm not doing the other stuff. And if I suddenly wind up with you know 10 spare minutes because one of my one-on-ones ended 10 minutes early, I shouldn't think about, should I send the emails right now for those thank yous during customer interviews? Um, no, I know that I should just go schedule that ad hoc one-on-one -on -one with the CTO to start talking to the platform strategy because that was what I said as my priority. Um, so that's what that looks like in practice. The second part is that when we say, we're going to go do this task, Pretend that there's nothing else in the world that you could possibly be doing. Um, because if you compartmentalize, um, it'll help you move faster. Um, once you say, this is the thing I'm doing, don't worry about all the other stuff that you could be doing, because that will then kind of slow your brain down, it will give you too much mental overhead, and that will reduce your ability to actually execute. And don't switch into the next task until you finish this one. Right? And so um, just really focus on just the one thing that you're doing. Don't worry about the entire rest of your back. And then, don't do this. Um, I can't tell you the number of times I've had conversations with folks where they've said things like, oh, well, you know, I have seven minutes until my next meeting, um, and so seven minutes isn't enough time for me to do any work. I'm just going to hang out, um, or I'm going to you know, have a snack, or I'm going to walk around. Which, to be fair, if you need to take a break, 
taking breaks is important, and so you should go do that. But if you were ready to go work in that time, and you're saying, well, I can't do anything because it's only five minutes or seven minutes, that's wrong. You can actually do quite a bit of work in those small pieces of time. Um, as an example, if you've only got three minutes until your next work item, you can schedule a meeting. You can clean up your notes, you can create outlines. Um, if you've got five minutes, you can draft an email, you can let people know that you've read their messages, and let them know when you plan on responding. If you've got 10 minutes, you can actually work on a presentation. You can fix a query, you can do some sort of prioritization. And so all of these things start to build up over time. You know, every small you know, three minutes there, three minutes there, starts to add up to be a meaningful chunk of productivity. So as an example, let's say that I have six meetings a day, um, because lots of product managers do have that many meetings a day. Um, and if you've got these six meetings, um, well, kind of in between these six meetings, um, you have this empty time in between the meetings. Um, each one is about five minutes. Well, five minutes times five blocks is 25 minutes a day, and if you're working five days a week, um, then that's actually two whole hours of work that you could be doing. Um, and so if you, if you can actually use that time, you might actually increase your bandwidth by 5%, which is no joke. And like an extra two hours out of 40 hours is pretty darn good. Um, and so that's why it's so important for us to pretend that we're not going to get interrupted, right? Don't worry about when is the next thing happening, right? Like if you need to set yourself an alarm or a timer, but then just go do it. Don't worry about, oh, well, I can't get enough done, because you might find that you'll get a lot more done than you expected.